Next on Street Smarts, these two will have to predict who knows their ethnic foods. Pronounce this word and use it in a sentence. This is this is kind of common knowledge. Tamel. <laughs> Tamel is a, a tip a uh, tropical fruit. <laughs> Uh, I'd like a little hot tamale tonight. Who knows their state lines? West Virginia was originally part of what state? Pennsylvania. And then why did it separate? Too many vampires. Street Smarts. Think you've got them? Find out now. Kiki to West Hollywood looking for John and Jane Q Public and tested their street smarts by asking basic questions about the world around them. It'll be up to our players to determine who's got it going on and who's a few noodles short of a casserole. And speaking of players, let's meet him. We have Brandy looking good. Great to see you. And we got Nathan right there. Yeah. Now remember, it's all or nothing on street smarts. The winner keeps the loot and the loser gets the boot. Let's meet the three people they'll be making snap judgments about. I began in Milwaukee, where I learned why Broadway Bob doesn't need to dress to impress. Broadway Bob, tell me about your, uh, your pants. Well, uh, you know a lot of guys, when they get 70 years old, they get smoking jackets. I wear smoking pants. <laughs> Broadway Bob, I understand you're in the Drag Racing Hall of Fame. I'm in the Hall of Fame as the greatest promoter in the history of drag racing. Oh, well, congratulations. Can we see your tongue? Very popular, I'm sure, Bob. Never without a date. <laughs> I love that guy. Next, I was proud to salute you Corporal him, Mike at the Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. So, Mike, where are you from and what do you do? I'm from Huntington, West Virginia. I'm in the Marine Corps. I'm a corporal. I'm a hazmat technician right now. Oh, so the ha hazardous materials you yes, take care of? Yes, I do. What are you going to do when you get out? Um, go back to school. Where are you going to go? Do you know? Uh, Marshall University. Oh, the Thundering Herd. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Mike, if you were going to be an animal, what animal would you be? A bear. Why a bear? Because they're always warm. They're pretty strong. I hear they're pretty fast, and no one um, messes with them. All right, so no one messes with you? <laughs> they try not to. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Look out for that giant boat. Finally in Vegas, Pua reminisced about the good old days. So, Pua, you're originally from Hawaii. Correct. Now, you used to be a stripper there? Yeah, for about a year and a half. How was that? It was fun, actually. Make good money. Right. Real? Make real good money, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you got out of that? Yeah, because I had two kids and I lost a body, so you can't strip with a body like this. Pua, what's your dream job? My dream job? Not to work, actually, just to stay home and be rich. Yeah, there's a dream job. Do nothing. Yeah, do nothing. <laughs> Who knew it? I asked the same question all three of our street scholars, and your challenge is a guess who answered the question right. You will lock in your choice, and a correct guess is going to get you $100. Okay, everyone? Yeah. Everyone looks ready? Let's get rolling. Okay, guys, here's the first question I asked a Broadway Bob, Mike, and Pua. What does a lint trap do? So pull up your paddles, guys, and tell me who knew it. What does a lint trap do? Who knew that Broadway Bob? Quite a character, Mike or Pua. Okay, you guys are both locked in pretty quick. You both think Pua. Now, Nathan, you're going to go with Pua? Oh, she has a lint trap. She has a She's got a big one. <laughs> I'll tell you whatever that means. What does a lint trap do? It traps all the lint on your clothes when you put them into the dryer. That's the right answer. You both have Pua winning. You both got $100. Nice job. Now, just for fun, because I like him so much, I want to see what my friend Broadway Bob had to say. What does a lint trap do? It traps the lint from the belly button. Oh my God! That would be a wrong answer. All right, Bob. <laughs> belly button lint. Right, okay, guys, here's the next question. Musician Gene Simmons is known for displaying what giant body part on stage? So who knew it? What do you think, guys? Do you think it was uh, Broadway Mike. Bob, Mike, or Pua? Okay, you guys, are, uh, you guys are both locked in here. And uh, Nathan, you think Broadway Bob's gonna know, huh? I have no idea what that was, but Broadway music something. Oh. S something. I <laughs> I don't know. Okay, all right. <laughs> Musician Gene Simmons is known for displaying what giant body part on stage? I think it's his tongue. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> he got it right. Way to go, Nathan. Well, there, there you go. There you go. Now, Brandon, we're going to check it with Mike, see if he also knew. Let's find out. Musician Gene Simmons is known for displaying what giant body part on stage? His tongue. Right. Who is Gene Simmons? He is the lead singer of Kiss. All right, give me, show me what he would do, maybe, if you were Gene Simmons. I, I don't have a very... His tongue goes like past yeah, his chin. It's like down here, man. It's impossible. He got it right, too, Brandy. Way to go. There you go. You both have $200. Yeah. You guys are on fire. Now, just for fun, we're going to check in with uh, my friend Pua. Pua! Musician Gene Simmons 
is known for displaying what giant body part on stage? His ass. He has a giant ass? Yeah. And he shows it on stage? Yeah. I don't know what uh, band she's watching, but it's not Kiss. Okay, guys, here's the last question of the round. You guys are two for two here. Let's go for a perfect score. Yeah. I asked all three, what are the cereal bits in honeycomb cereal shaped like? So who do you think knew it? Do you think Broadway Bob, Mike, or Pua can tell me that one? You guys are uh, mm. both doing very well. Are you ready, Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, you guys are both it. locked in. And Nathan, you think Mike knows this time, huh? He lives off the stuff. He you does? know he does. <laughs> you know he does. <laughs> yeah, I like cereal. Thinking. Let's check it out. What are the cereal bits in honeycomb cereal shaped like? Uh, stars. They're shaped like stars. Yes. What's your favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, Cheerios. Yeah, mine too. I love a little sugar. Yeah, it makes it better. Okay. Sugar <laughs> makes everything better. Eat them. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nathan. Absolutely Mike did not know not. that. Now, Brandy, you're going for a perfect score here this round. Yes. You think Pua knows this yep, one? Yep, she's got kids. She's got to know what oh, the cereal see, looks like. Oh, see, good thinking. All right, let's check it out. What are the cereal bits in honeycomb cereal shaped like? Honeycombs. What are that? Oh, it's honeycombs. And what are they? What's a honeycomb? Beehives. Very good. Hey. That's a right answer. Way to go, Brandy. Pua did know. Good thinking. You paid attention to the interview at the beginning of the show. Uh, let's see here. Nathan, you got 200 bucks at the end of first round, but Brandy has 300. Nice job, Brandy. We just saw who knew it. We're going to find out who blew it next. What is a futon? A futon is something you put in a salad. You put in a salad? Yeah. Little bread things on top, the salad dressing over the futon. Fold them up when you're done. Hey, welcome back to Street Smarts. Let's meet our players. They're hitting each other. All right, stop that, you guys. Now, Brandy, uh, tell me why your first moment in the spotlight wasn't so glamorous. Well, it was me, a boyfriend, a bunch of friends go for a late night dip in the woods. Right. Car comes, lights, big fog light. It's the cops. <laughs> All my friends scatter. My boyfriend grabbed the hand of another girl and ran off into the woods, and I was the only one who got in trouble. <laughs> Needless oh, to say, man. I dumped his ass, and he's there doing nothing, and I'm here in LA. Good for you, Brandy. All right, now we have Nathan here. Now, Nathan, tell everybody why the number 113 is your lucky number. 113 is my lucky number because that's how many stitches I've had in my head uh, oh, from the ages of four to eight that I had so many consecutive accidents. The last time I got in an accident, right. I didn't want to get stitches. I was so fed up with the hospital. My mom goes, fine, you don't want stitches? Don't get blood on the carpet. Yeah, just don't bleed on the carpet, right? <laughs> Typical mom saying. All right, well, thanks for both. Uh, thank you for both being here. You guys got $300, $200. We got a high scoring game I'm gonna here. catch up. That's right. And it's time to pull out all the stops as we start our next round. Who blew it? Academics. One answered right, one answered wrong. Now, each time Brandy or Nathan correctly identifies who flunked the question, they get 200 bucks. Yeah, and you can earn an extra $200 by using that dunce cap. Here's how. When you hear a question you think your opponent's too brain dead to answer, bash that buzzer in your chair and dunce them. If they cannot answer that question, you get the 200 bucks. But remember, there's only one dunce in the round, so use it wisely, guys. Okay, here's the first question that I asked to both Broadway Bob and Mike. I showed both this card, and I asked them to pronounce this word and use it in a sentence. So flip up your paddles, guys. Blew it. Flip up your paddles, guys. Uh, yeah, and tell me who blew it. Broadway Bob or Mike? Okay, you guys both locked in. You're both thinking Mike's the one who doesn't know this, huh? All right, uh, Nathan, why Mike? Going on intelligence alone. Okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, good thing. Let's check it out. Mike, pronounce this word and use it in a sentence. Tamel. Tamel is a, a, tip, a tropical fruit. A tropical fruit? Yes. That's the wrong answer. Way to go, guys. You both had Mike keep blowing. Brandy's got the 500. Nathan's got 400. And uh, for a correct answer, Broadway Bob knew. Let's hear this. Broadway Bob, pronounce this word and use it in a sentence. Uh, I'd like a little hot tamale tonight. <laughs> so there you go. Broadway Bob knows. Okay, guys. All right. Here's a question I asked to Broadway Bob and to Pua. I asked both of them, how many moons orbit the Earth? How many moons orbit the Earth? Who blew it? Do you think it was Broadway Bob or Pua that blew that one? Brandy, perfect score so far. Nathan, right behind her. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, win. Yeah, you guys are both locked in. Now, Brandy, yeah, you both think Pua blew it. Brandy, you think she doesn't know this one? Um, she just seems like she's gonna guess a high number. She's not really too okay. aware of. All right, let's like take a look, that. Brandy. See if we can get you guys both 200 bucks. How many moons orbit the Earth? One. One moon. One moon. And you know, we landed on the moon in America in what year? Um, 1852. 1852, we were on the moon. Yeah. Ah, she did know that one. I'm sorry, you both had Pua. She got the right answer. Broadway Bob's the one who blew it. Check it out. How many moons orbit the Earth? Many thousands. Many thousands? 
okay, that was wrong. Like we said before, it's one. And we landed on the moon in 1969. Pua said 1852. That's a little off. Okay, <laughs> here's the last question I asked to Mike and to Pua. Where would you normally get a herniated disc? Oh, Brandy, you've been done saying it. Put the cap on her head. You only have to do it once. Dance. All right. Ooh. 200 bucks on the line here, Brandy. If you get this right, the money's yours. If not, Nathan's going to get the 200 and take the lead. I'm going to read it again. You have five seconds. Where would you normally get a herniated disc? In your back, your spine. It's the right answer. Way to go, Brandy. Throw that cap on Nathan. Nice job. 700 bucks for Brandy. Nathan, oh, my God. OK, guys, now who blew this up here? Do you think it was Mike or Pua? You can leave it on, Mike. Yeah, actually, Nathan, you have to leave it on. I have to leave it on? Leave it on, yeah. Damn it! Okay. So you're done. <laughs> so who blew up, Mike or Pua? Oh, um, all right. Pua! Pua! Yeah. Okay, guys, both locked in. You think Pua blew up? Let's check it out. her name. Pua. Where would you normally get a herniated disc? In your leg. In your leg? Yeah. Well, what's a herniated disc? What is a disc, first of all? It's a, a cartridge in your leg that you can pull, like, when you're playing football. There's, like, some cartridge in there? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who loves that Pua? She blew for you. Pua! There you go, guys. The correct answer. Mike had it. Check it out. Where would you normally get a herniated disc? In your butt. No, I mean in your back. In your back. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying, Mike. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's recap the scores here. Nathan's got $600. But Brandy's on fire. $900. Pick your pony! This time, Brandy and Nathan will choose one of the three science for the entire round. But try to guess how they'll answer three questions. A correct prediction is worth 300 bones this time. Uh, so we're going to leave the dunce cap in this round, guys. It can only be used once, and it's worth another 300 bills. Nathan's got 600, Brad had it, Brandy's got $900. Yep. Uh, now, so whoever's trailing gets to choose first. Nathan, that is you. So who, who has, has the best name? Money on? Pua! You're going with Pua, you love Pua. Pua. Brandy, how about you? I'm going with Mike. You're Puppy going bear. with Mike. Okay, all right. Okay. Nathan, here's your first question to um, Pua. Pua. I just like when you say it. Okay. According to the fairy tale, what animal does a princess have to kiss to get a prince? Now, do you think she got that right or wrong? If you get this right, you get a uh, tie game here. Think she got it right, This huh? is This is kind of common knowledge. This is okay, good. Okay, let's this see if good. we have a tie game. This. Let's find out. According to the fairy tale, what animal does a princess have to kiss to get a prince? You? Oh, I mean a frog? <laughs> yeah, it's a frog. Lucky! He's funny! Yeah. You got it right, Nathan. Way to go, buddy. 300 bucks. We got a tie game here. A couple of good players today, not guys, on Street Smart. Okay, well, Brandy says not for long. All right, here. First question I asked him, Mike, what is the polar bear club? Oh, you've been dunced. Nathan, put the cap up there. Brandy, $300 on the line. He dunced oh, you before. He dunced it. you again. If you get this right, you get the $300. I'm going to read it again. you got five seconds. Mm -hmm. What is the polar bear club? Those old guys go swimming in the frozen water. They break the hole in the ice and they go in. That's a right answer. Way to go, Brandy. You get the $300. I gotta put that dunce cap on Nathan I again. I'll even take it. Nathan. All right. Brandy, I gotta I gotta give give it Mike up. got it right or wrong. Wrong. Nathan, she swam naked once. She knows polar bears. Man, All right, she thinks right. I got her wrong. Right. Let's find out. What is the polar bear club? It's uh, the guys that cut holes in ice. It's out in like Iceland, and then they jump down into the water. Crazy people. That's a far. That's a right wrong. answer, Brandy. I'm no, sorry. He got it right. He said again. exactly what you said. Wrong. Our, our contestants wrong. are fighting. Okay. okay. All right. All right, Nathan. Here you can tie it up again. I asked Pua, why wouldn't you normally grill hot dogs over a sapphire? Why? Why wouldn't you normally grill hot dogs over a sapphire? You think she got this? She doesn't know what sapphire is. All right, let's find out, see if you're right. Why wouldn't you normally grill hot dogs over a sapphire? Because you don't got one, it's too hot outside to barbecue. Well, what's a sapphire? A barbecue grill. A barbecue grill and it's too hot? Yeah. That's a wrong answer, Nathan, way to go. $300 for you. You have $1,200, Brandy has $1,200. We got a high scoring game here. Someone's gonna make some money. Correct Me? answer is because a sapphire is a gem. A jewel, a gem. A, yeah, a jewel, a jewel. It. Jewel, gem, whatever. Okay, here we go, Brandy. Next question to Mike. I asked him, who is Emilio Estevez's famous father? Do you think Mike could get this um, right or wrong, Brandy? What I do you think? I think he's going to get it right. You think he'll get this one right? Yeah, I hope so. Okay, <laughs> let's find out. Who is Emilio Estevez's famous father? Um, Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland? Yes. I thought Kiefer Sutherland was the son of Donald Sutherland. No, they're, well, he changed his name. It's like one of those little aliases names, and uh, we all know. If you ever had to go by an alias, what would it be? Uh, 
Ben Hur. <laughs> he got it wrong, Brady. I'm sorry. He did not get that one right. Do you know the correct answer, Emilio Estevez's father? Yeah, Martin Sheen. See, you know. You watch the West Wing. Uh. Okay, all right. Okay, Nathan, here's your uh, uh, next. Uh, this is the last question of the round for you, actually, to Pua. Pua. West Virginia was originally part of what state? I think she got that right. There's only one Don's uh, fan. Darn it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted to dunce him so bad. I know you do. All right, what do you think, Nathan? Um, <laughs> wrong. She got it wrong. She got it wrong. Let's she had no idea. West Virginia was originally part of what state? Pennsylvania. It was part of Pennsylvania. Then why did it separate? Because they said it had to. Why? What did it Too do? Too many people. Too many people. Too many vampires. Too many what? Vampires. Isn't that Transylvania? No, Pennsylvania got them too. I'm from Pennsylvania. Yeah, well. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> she got it wrong. Way to go, Nathan. You're at the $1,500. Nice job. Uh, West Virginia was originally part of Virginia. 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 See how that worked? Okay, last question of the round, Brandy. You're trailing by $300 now. This I'm is it. Get it. You can have a tie game going into the ways of death. I asked Mike, what famous literary figures is the Three Musketeers candy bar named after? Oh my God, going? he's he's got to get it right. If he I'm doesn't, gonna, I don't know what's going to happen to this guy. Okay, Brandy, let's find out. What famous literary figures is the Three Musketeers candy bar named after? King Arthur. Is it named after King Arthur? Yes. He's the famous literary figure it's named after. Sure. Oh, it hurts. That's a wrong oh, answer, Brandy. Kind of yeah. close. The correct you answer is you. Three Musketeers. Oh, See how that God. works? This it's kind of funny how it works. Reviewing the scores here, Brandy right got $1,200. Right but right Nathan took the lead. Now it's $1,500. Okay, when we return, Brandy and Nathan will be making a final prediction on a question I asked the Broadway Bob, Mike, and Pua. I asked them. According to the Bible, how many commandments did God give to Moses? So stay tuned because there's at least 10 reasons to watch our final round. The wager. Do not go away. <laughs> Welcome back. Brandy and Nathan, here's what's kicking. During the break, each of you secretly chose one of the three people out on the street. You made a prediction as to whether they were right or wrong, and then you wagered an amount of money not to exceed the total you now have. High scoring game here. Brandy's got $1,200. Now, Brandy, if you won some money, what would you do with it? I am going to throw a wild party. Oh, very good. Maybe end in the lake again? Uh, possibly. Okay, all right. Now, Nathan, if you win big money, what are you going to do with it? Join her. Join her? All right. I, I can't argue with that. All right. What would you do? What would you I'm going to go to Australia. Oh, you'd go to Australia. All right. You have $1,500. You are in the lead. Now, remember, only one of you is leaving here any richer, which means everything rides on this final question. And here's a question I asked to Broadway Bob, Mike, and Pua. According to the Bible, how many commandments did God give to Moses? Brandy, you're trailed by only $300. You got $1,200. Some big money can be won here. So whose clip do you want to see? You are going to go with Broadway Bob. And Nathan, how about you? Holding on to a $300 lead. He's going to go with Mike. Mikey. All right, well, nobody chose Pua, so we're going to say goodbye to Pua. Bye, Pua. And Brandy, we're going to watch Bob's clip right now, see if you can come back. According to the Bible, how many commandments did God give to Moses? Ten. Ten commandments. That is the right answer. Ten commandments. Uh, Brandy, Bob got that right. What did you say he would do? You said right. All right, Brandy, how much money you get out of your total? You added 12 hundred to it for all. She now has 24 dollars. She is in the lead. She has the lead. Now, Nathan, you went with Mike. Everything rides on this final clip. You look nervous. Let's check it out. According to the Bible, how many commandments did God give to Moses? Ten. All right. He said ten. Ten is the correct answer. Nathan, you went with Mike. He got it right. What did you say, buddy? You said right. Okay. Now, Nathan, you had to wager more than $900 to win this game. This is a very exciting conclusion to Street Smarts. Did you wager more than $900 and defeat Brandy? You know what's funny about this? I can actually add. 901 gives him $2,400. According to the Bible, how many commandments did God give to Moses? Ten. Gave him ten commandments. 